Today we're going to talk about the ascending sensory tracts of the spinal cord. We're going to use this poor chap to do it. You see, we need to start by having a look at a transverse section of the spinal cord, and we can achieve this by slicing him this way, <gasps> and then looking at the cord from the top. So this is what we would see on a transverse section. The indent over here is known as the ventral or anterior median fissure, and the dip at the back is known as the dorsal median sulcus. The middle bit that kind of looks like a butterfly is known as the grey matter of the spinal cord. It's made up of the cell bodies of nerve cells or neurons. The outer bit is known as the white matter and this is made up of the fatty myelin sheets that cover nerve fibres. It's the white matter that contains the ascending tracts. These two structures are known as horns. The back two are known as the dorsal horns and the front two are known as the ventral horns. We're going to be focusing on the dorsal horns for this video. There are a few more structures that we need to add. We have the ventral root and the dorsal root here, and these two combine to form a spinal nerve, which is what ultimately carries nerve signals to the body. Just to clarify, the spinal nerve, dorsal root, and ventral root are also found on the opposite side of the cord, but for simplicity, we'll focus on one side throughout the video. The same goes for the white matter tracts when we get to them. Don't forget that everything is mirrored on the other side as well. Generally speaking, the dorsal structures are more concerned with sensory information processing, whilst the ventral structures are more concerned with motor information. Now, what is that little bump over there in the dorsal root? This is the dorsal root ganglion. Now we know the dorsal root is this part of the spinal cord. A ganglion in this context just means a group of nerve cells or nerve cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. In basic terms, it's just a clump of sensory nerve cell bodies that sits in the dorsal root. So we've talked about how the grey matter is on the inside and the white matter is around the outside of the spinal cord. And we know the spinal cord tracts are located in the white matter now there are two major groups of spinal cord tracts. Ascending tracts go from the periphery to the brain and the descending tracts which go from the brain out to the periphery. You can think of these tracts like highways through which sensory or motor information travels. Sensory information would naturally travel from the peripheries to the brain through ascending tracts and motor information goes from the brain to the peripheries through descending tracts. There are lots of types of sensory information, but the ones that we're going to focus on include pain, vibration, touch, and temperature. These are picked up by the body through receptors, such as nociceptors for pain, mechanoreceptors for vibration and touch, and thermoreceptors for temperature. These sensory receptors give rise to nerves, and these nerves travel to the brain to let your brain know what's going on around it. The concept of the sensory homunculus is really important to grasp. It's the idea that there's a neurological map in your brain. For example, if you have a GPS, a point on the GPS corresponds to an actual real-life point on Earth. The same way, a single point on your finger actually corresponds to a particular part of your brain in the somatosensory cortex. Roughly speaking, this bit tends to correspond to the legs, this part to the trunk, and this bit to the hand. The hand takes up a larger part of the cortex because there are more sensory receptors in your hand than in your legs, for example and therefore more nerves make up points in the somatosensory cortex for the hands than the legs. Now let's talk about the order of the nerves in the ascending tracts. The ascending tracts we're going to talk about have first, second and third order neurons. So we've discussed how there are sensory receptors out in the peripheries, and these need to relay information to one of two places, either the spinal cord or the brainstem. From there, the information needs to pass to get to a part of the brain called the thalamus. Finally, the thalamus passes on the information to the primary sensory cortex of the brain. The nerve relaying information from the peripheral sensory receptor to the spinal cord or brain stem is known as the first order neuron. The nerve carrying information from the spinal cord and brain stem to the thalamus is the second order neuron. And finally, the nerve carrying information from the thalamus to the primary sensory cortex is the third order neuron. 
OK, let's start talking tracts. We'll start with the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. This is responsible for carrying fine touch, vibration, and proprioception modalities. If you need a cool way of remembering this, you can check out the Medic in a Minute Instagram page for easy to remember mnemonics. The link is in the description for a mnemonic to help you remember this particular pathway. We know all the ascending tracts are located in the white matter. The dorsal columns are located between the dorsal horn and the dorsal median sulcus. In reality, a thin septum actually splits this tract into two. The most medial tract is known as the fasciculus gracilis, and it carries sensory information from the legs. You can easily remember this since gracilis is actually a muscle in the leg. The lateral tract is known as the fasciculus cuneatus, which carries sensory information from the arms. Let's start by talking through the fasciculus gracilis pathway. Let's say someone pokes you on your knee and activates a sensory receptor. A nerve will arise from the receptor and make its way to the spinal cord by entering through the spinal nerve into the dorsal root. It will give off its cell body into the dorsal root ganglion. It then enters the dorsal horn. Now the nerve needs to take the highway up to the brain, and it's going to do this by entering the fasciculus gracilis tract, which we know is located medially, right here. The nerve enters the fasciculus gracilis to make its way up to the medulla oblongata in the brainstem. The medulla oblongata has two nuclei which are very conveniently linked. The medial nuclei are known as the nucleus gracilis, and the lateral nuclei are known as the nucleus cuneatus. In this context, a nucleus just means a collection of nerve cell bodies in the central nervous system, as in the brain or spinal cord. Since this is the fasciculus gracilis pathway, this nerve goes to the nucleus gracilis, where it will terminate by synapsing with another nerve. Now we can see that this nerve has carried information from the periphery to the brainstem, and this makes it a first order neuron. Another nerve continues the pathway by crossing over to the other side. This crossing over is known as decussation. Now of course this diagram is simplified and ordinarily there would be loads more nerves travelling in this direction as well. The bundle of nerves travelling in this pathway is now known as the medial lemniscus. This nerve will travel up to get to the thalamus in the brain where it synapses in the ventral posterolateral or VPL nucleus of the thalamus. Since this nerve took information from the brainstem to the brain, it's a second order neuron. The final nerve goes from the VPL to the leg part of the somatosensory cortex, which is found medially. This nerve is the third order neuron. A common exam question is stating where the cell bodies of each of these nerves are found. We know the first order neurons have their cell bodies in the dorsal root ganglia. Second order neuron cell bodies are found in the nucleus gracilis, and finally, third order neuron cell bodies are found in the VPL of the thalamus. Now we'll talk through the fasciculus cuneatus pathway, which relays sensation from the upper limbs. So, a sensory receptor on our finger picks up some sensation, and it will send the signal along the nerve, which makes its way to the spinal cord. This time, the nerve needs to get onto the fasciculus cuneatus pathway, which is found laterally over here. It heads up to the medulla oblongata and synapses in the nucleus cuneatus. This is the first order neuron. The second neuron arises in the medulla and decussates over to the other side, travelling up in the medial lemniscus to reach the VPL of the thalamus where it synapses. This is the second order neuron. The final neuron heads up to the hand part of the sensory cortex. This is the third order neuron. It is now easy to understand where the pathway gets its name. The dorsal columns refer to the white matter containing the fasciculus cuneatus and gracilis, whilst the medial lemniscus pathway is the name for the bundle of nerves heading up to the thalamus. The final tract we'll talk about today is the spinothalamic tract, which carries pain, temperature, crude touch and pressure sensations. The spinothalamic tract is located anterolaterally around the ventral horns of the cord, and that's the reason it can also be known as the anterolateral system. So let's say you get stung by a bee on your finger. It'll get picked up by a nociceptor and a nerve will relay this information to your spinal cord. Now there's something a bit different about the spinothalamic tract. Right at the tip of the dorsal horns is something called Lissauer's tract. Some of the nerves in the spinothalamic tract can enter Lissauer's tract and ascend or descend spinal cord levels. For example, if this nerve is entering in at C6, it might go up a level to C5 and then enter the dorsal horn. 
Once in the dorsal horn, this nerve synapses in an area of the dorsal horn called the substantia gelatinosa. This is our first order neuron. The second neuron arises and actually decussates within the spinal cord through an area of white matter called the ventral white commissure. Once it crosses, it hitches onto the correct spinothalamic highway up to the brain. This nerve doesn't actually synapse in the brain stem, but it goes straight up to the VPL of the thalamus to synapse. This is the second order neuron. Finally, the third order neuron goes from the VPL to the hand part of the sensory cortex. To summarize the cell bodies for the spinothalamic tract, first order neuron cell bodies are in the dorsal root ganglion. Second order neuron cell bodies in this tract, however, are found in the substantia gelatinosa of the spinal cord. Third order neuron cell bodies are again found in the VPL of the thalamus. We can see that the information is going from the spinal cord to the thalamus, hence the name spinothalamic. Thank you for watching this Medic in a Minute video. Please be sure to check out our other free resources which are available on the social media links listed.